um, it's also possible for um, a single field declaration to be um, inherited into um, a class via two different paths. But that's not a problem because for that to happen it, it must have come from an interface. And um, um, in any case it's considered to be inherited only once. Now. Um, a hidden static name can always be accessed using class name dot field name, and a hidden instance variable may, and I stress that word may, uh, be accessible using cast or super. Sometimes you can't do it that way, and uh, here's an example to uh, demonstrate that. In uh, this package, package one here, we've got this class with a um, field k that's uh, an integer and it's um, protected, set equal to one. And uh, here in this uh, uh, class here, again in package one, we have uh, class q, which um, extends p. And uh, this time the uh, uh, field k is set equal to 9 and uh, it's a private integer. Now in this case, um, this field here, this k here, um, hides the k there. But what's more, it doesn't matter what this is in fact. Um, this could even be a static reference type. So it could be something like um, um, what, a static um, um, array of Q for instance. It doesn't matter at all. What matters only is the name. The fact that the name of this field matches that means it's going to hide it. Also of course note that um, this is private and that's protected. It doesn't matter what this is. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, uh, a wider access like it is with uh, methods, it can be narrow, it doesn't matter at all. And uh, now if we look at this uh, class M here, this is in package 2 and uh, it extends Q. Uh, we look at this down here, it just um, it just calls this method here test it. Now uh, there's nothing None of these options down here will, act, will enable you to get it, the K in Q or the K in P. Because if you look at uh, the first one here, um, this dot K is going to attempt to get that K there. But of course it's private, so that will give a compiler error. Similarly, if you do super dot K, again it will attempt to get this one, but it's private, so it won't allow it. If you try and get this K there in class P by casting like this, again this is not going to work. And this is a bit more subtle this time. It's not going to work because it's in a different package and it's protected. So if you recall what we were saying about um, uh, protected, this cast of the cast of this to P. Uh, means effectively that you're going from P to P, which is uh, which does not pass through the class that you're in, which is M. So the compiler will rule that out. Uh, likewise, if you just um, you just uh, try and get K directly again, it will not work because it's private. Now, if um, if of course uh, instead of being if M instead of being in package two was in package one, uh, this would work. This would get that version of K that's in P. And that is of course because um, because if you're in the same package, then protected behaves just like the default case. And uh, in the default case, of course, we can just access directly from the K. 
cast. Uh, just a few more things to say about Super and uh, this. Um, there are two different uses of uh, this in Java and there are two different uses of Super as well. Now so far we've only seen both of them used as references. Um, uh, they can in fact be treated as methods, uh, actually uh, constructors rather than methods. Uh, of course there's never any ambiguity again because constructors are always followed by left bracket and references aren't, they're followed by a dot or nothing at all. Now as um, methods or constructors I should say this um, is a constructor in the current class and super is a constructor in the super class and when we come to deal with class initialization shortly we're um, I'll go into a lot more detail about this. Now, um, in general, of course, it's a, a bad idea to have a, a variable and a constructor, or method for that matter, with the same name. But um, doing things like this, um, um, I suppose, saves um, a couple of keywords in the language. And um, it, it sort of makes sense in a way, I suppose, as well, once you've seen it done. Anyway, it's never really a problem. Okay. Um, I thought I'd show you a few examples here when you where you've got to use this. Um, yeah, in this class A here, we've got x and y, and uh, this example here takes um, two arguments x and y that are passed into this method, and um, it just sets the uh, field x and y to that value, obviously. Um, and here, of course, you've got to use this. Using this, of course, this dot x refers to that, this dot y refers to that. Um, technically, of course, we say that um, x and y here are are shadowed rather than hidden, and we do that because it all takes place within one class here. And this uh, sometimes happens with local variables and um, arguments; they often shadow uh, fields outside. Um, here's another example where you've got to use this. Um, uh, this and this time is um, being used just by itself here, uh, taking in a um, reference to A, and if it's the uh, same as the one that we're in, it returns true, otherwise false. Okay. Uh, now, um, super. Uh, when when super is used as a reference. It's got to be followed by a dot and an identifier, where the identifier is either a field or a method, etc. Um, unlike this, you cannot use it alone. You can't use it by itself, just like that. Also, you can't do something like um, super dot super. That's not allowed either. You can only go to the to the class that uh, you're extending. You can't go further up the tree. And that would be rather um, rather bad practice anyway because it uh, would not be very object oriented. You can essentially you can only bypass your own overrides by using super you can't bypass overrides in some other class only your own 